Hey everybody, Dr. Jensen again, Statistics Overview Part 2. So as you may recall, we left off with level of measurement. So we were talking about nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio data uh, and looking at where a variable falls and how much measurable information we get out of it. And remember from the last lecture we talked about pot smoking and how we could ask about that topic in a lot of ways. And depending on the way we ask about it, we would be able to get more or less information. So again, just by review, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So the further to the right we go, the more measurable information we get. And our favorite thing to measure is things in quantities, okay? Because that way, that way we can do a mean and, and all kinds of other statistics with that. Um, they give us a little bit more accuracy and exactness. Okay, so let's actually go into what these measurement types are. So first of all, we have nominal variables, or I just call them VARs, nominal VARs. So nominal variables are just uh, a type of variable, a level of measurement called nominal, that allow for only qualitative classification. So we just describe the category or group that that person is in. So race ethnicity is an example of, of a nominal variable. So are you this race or this race? Um, are you male or female? Are you uh, this religion or this religion? You know, so it's any category, one versus another. Okay, in criminal justice, we do a lot of yes, no style questions. Um, did you get parole or not? You know, did uh, they win the trial or not? Yes, no. Um, was the verdict guilty or not guilty? Not guilty by reason of insanity? Um, were they acquitted? Were they indicted? And then we just want to know what category of action happened with the person. So and we use nominal variables all the time. Okay. So with nominals, um, they only allow for you to classify some kind of behavior, identity, group, action of some kind. Uh, you can only measure it in terms of whether that individual belongs to this group or that group or some distinctively different category. We can't even quantify or rank the categories unless we just want to know how many of the group we have. So we couldn't take an average of, you know, do you have a dog or a cat or some other pet or no pets? How would you take an average of those responses? How would you take an average of a variable called gender? What is the average between male and female? You can't. They're quantities, so it doesn't really work. So we don't do things like means um, and, and those kind of statistics. Um, anything we have to quantify, um, we don't do. Standard deviation, nah, we don't do that with these kind of variables. But we like them because we like knowing group membership. Okay, nominal are done. Now we're going to go into ordinal variables. So ordinal variables are um, just, they're a lot like nominal, like some kind of category but they allow us to rank order the items we measure in terms of which has less or which has more of the quality represented by the variable. So you remember from your stats test, we talked about birth order. So oldest, youngest, middle child. So you would know qualitatively who is older or younger, but you wouldn't know by how much. You just know they're the oldest child, they're the second oldest. Um, so you could put them in an order with who was born first and who was born last, but you wouldn't know how old they were. Um, ordinal variables you'll see over here. Um, you'll see a variable that looks like this. We call these Likert style questions, things like strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, neither. So we want to know maybe what you think of a certain topic, whether you agree with it or not, and we'll have you, um, you know, select which category best represents you. Okay, so we call it Likert. Um, we know there's more or less agreement with something in a, in a question like this, um, but we don't know exactly the true difference or how much. So, if, so what's the actual difference between someone that says strongly disagree um, and someone that just says disagree, right? So can we actually, even though there are numbers assigned, you see the, you know, the bubble sheets and survey questions like this, um, well, what's the actual difference between a one and a two or a four and a five? Um, what's going to tip you over from agreement to strong disagreement? We just know there's more disagreement or less agreement, but we don't know exactly how much. We can't quantify it. So we like ordinal variables because we can have people rank how they feel, their attitudes. Um, they can give us um, a sense of, of, you know, maybe how much of something they have, how intense it is, but not an exact quantity. 
So we do these in criminal justice all the time too. So maybe there's an escalation where we go, okay, we want to know if you, um, you know, were, were eligible for bail, um, if you were not bail eligible as an offender. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit more of a, a quality of seriousness to that offender and we can kind of rank them. We have low risk offenders and high risk offenders. We have felonies and misdemeanors and you can kind of say, you know, which is the most severe offense you've ever had? Misdemeanor, um, state felony, federal felony, you know, so we can kind of show more or less severity when we can rank order those, okay? So that's just an example of ordinal. Let's jump into interval. I keep moving myself around. Interval variables are numbers. We can rank things, we can know what groups you're in, but we can quantify stuff. Compare the sizes of the differences between them. So, you know, here's the example, a famous example, temperature, okay? So I'm gonna move myself back up here. Interval variables, like temperature, can be measured in degrees Fahrenheit and constitutes an interval scale. So for example, we can say that a temperature of 40 degrees is higher than a temperature of 30 degrees. And then an increase from 20 to 40 degrees is twice as much as an increase from 30 to 40. We know there's exactly a 10 degree difference between 30 and 40, and we can feel it, right? We can quantify the difference between those two. Um, if you say you've committed um, you know, five felonies and I've committed two, there's an exact three felony difference between the two of us. So now we can get into quantities. What's the average number of felonies that this group of inmates have committed um, over the course of their whole life? Um, how many times has this gone to trial? How many plea bargains have we done? Um, that's an interval variable. So interval variables give us quantities, how many and how much, okay? So ratio variables, we don't see a lot of these. Um, we see them occasionally. Ratio variables, very similar to interval variables. They deal with quantities. Uh, they give us um, numbers. They have all the properties of interval variables, um, just like we saw with being able to calculate something. But they also feature an identifiable absolute zero point or the absence of something or the failure to begin. So you might see a ratio variable called time. Okay. Um, you might see um, a ratio variable called distance, okay? So, you know, in temperature, you could go below zero, right? You could go negative. You could go positive, you could go negative, all over a range, an interval of numbers. In ratio, you can't. You can't be negative pounds. You can't be negative time, okay? So you have to start at zero, and you can only go up from there. So you can still do, you know, this is two times more than y, but you can't, you can't go negative. Okay, so with ratio, typical examples, time, weight, space, uh, Kelvin is a temperature a lot of physicists like to use because zero degrees Kelvin means the absence of heat. There is no heat. Um, not only could we say a Kelvin temperature of 200 degrees is higher than 100, we could correctly say it's twice as high from a true zero point of no heat at all. So recall with temperature in Fahrenheit, you could measure it negatively and still indicate the presence of something, the presence of a very cold day, okay? Um, but with ratio, you have to have a zero point. So, you know, these are measurement levels we see more in um, the biological sciences um, and physics than you'll see in social science, but time is one that comes up occasionally. Okay, so you'll hear me say interval or ratio because they have all the same properties, they're numbers, we can quantify them. Um, we often treat them the same. So. Uh, you may just hear me say that a lot. The three main ones you're going to see the most are nominal, ordinal, interval. Okay, that's it. Okay, so again, nature of the data gives you um, how much measurable information you have. So you could not only say how many felonies do you have, but you could actually redistribute that variable. We call it recoding, which I'm going to teach you how to do. And you could say, I just want to know if they have any felonies. I don't care how many they have. I just want to know if they have any. Um, so you could organize it into... into has felonies, doesn't have felonies, okay? So you can get all kinds of different ways of measuring a variable depending on what you want to know, okay? So we do this often with data that has to do with attitudes, beliefs, experiences, behaviors, group membership, 
um, finding yourself in an identity um, of, of one kind or another and we want to think that identity maybe makes things different we want to test if it does um, so this is why we measure things in different ways so it can tell us more about what's going on and, and again these different ways have different properties which we're going to study soon as well okay so that is level of measurement nominal ordinal interval ratio that's it we'll see you next time